Hello everybody, my name is Mark Garcia, engineer at Carla Simulator, and in this presentation I will talk about the new OpenDrive standalone mode, introduced in version 099. I will start with a small introduction and how to work with it. Then I will explain a bit about the generation parameters and what they do. And I will end with an explanation on how it internally works, its limitation and the future of this mode. This new feature allow perform full simulation starting from a single OpenDrive file. No additional geometries nor assets are required. Any OpenDrive file can be easily ingested by Carla now. To this end, the simulation takes an OpenDrive file and procedurally creates a 3D mesh to run the simulation with. This is done by reading the content of the OpenDrive through Python and using Carla as a bridge to send this content to the server side. There, it is processed and a message generated from it. Also, the traffic lights and signs are placed over the map. A set of default uh, spawn points are automatically distributed and everything is ready to be used, as all the other maps in Carla. Here, you can see me using the Python API to load an OpenDrive file from the client side. The resulting mesh describes the road definition in a minimalistic manner. All the elements will correspond with the OpenDrive file, but besides that, there will be only void. Traffic lights, stops and yields will be generated on the fly. Pedestrians will navigate over the sidewalks and the crosswalks that appear on the map. As the standalone mode uses the XODR directly, any issue on it will propagate to the simulation. This could be a problem, especially at junctions, where many lanes are mixed. In order to easily test this feature, the config script under Python API slash util has a new argument, minus x. This expects an string with the, op the, with the path to an open drive file. If the mesh is generated with the script, the parameters used will always be the default ones. But what this script is really doing is making a call to the Python API function generate open drive world that expects two arguments. The content of the oxidator file, not the path to it, and the generation, uh, the generation parameters that I will explain in a moment. This way, you can make a simple script that automatizes the SOM test through several OpenDrive files, just with this line of code. The video I shown before is using this, this exact function with the file under Python API slash util slash OpenDrive folder called townbig.xodr. This is a new OpenDrive we provide just for the test of this feature. These are all the parameters that can be used to define the mesh generation. I will now present the relevant ones. Instead of creating the world map as unique mesh, different fragments are created. Working smaller prevent unexpected issues. Also by dividing the mesh, not all of it has to be rendered at a time. This is a step towards a larger goal, where this mode will be able to generate huge maps. This will be improved o um, over time trying to adjust our split algorithm to fit uh, what Unreal consumes better for performance reasons. In our last iterations, junctions have been polished to avoid inaccuracies that occur, especially where uneven lanes join. This uses a Laplacian method to smooth the vertices on an iterative way. For now, this does a good job in all the cases we've tested on, but this can also be improved. Since the nature of OpenDrive is to mainly represent the road and where the cars can navigate through, we have had to add some safety measures in order to prevent vehicles from falling off the map if they go off-road for any reason. We've generated physical voids on the boundaries of the road, even in the sidewalks. For now, these are not generated in junctions, where there is no easy way to check for boundaries since the road can cross each other. For that reason, we expanded the lane width in junctions to fill up holes that can appear in places of the junction that are not defined in OpenDrive. Here we can see the world pipeline when a new OpenDrive arrives at the server. It starts by generating our internal map based on OpenDrive. After that, and using all the available functionalities of the map API and the waypoint API, our mesh factory generates a mesh for all the lanes, roads, and safety measurements. At this point, an OBJ file is created. 
This file is sent to the recast builder in order to asynchronously compute the pedestrian navigation binary, which will be consumed by Carla as well. At the same time, we use Unreal's API to actually create the mesh from our format to the engine's one. And that's it. The server is ready to connect. Due to a recast builder, pedestrian navigation can be inaccessible for a few seconds or minutes, depending on the size of the generated map. But everything else can be accessed normally. There are still missing some things, like the road super elevation, which is not being exported by Roadrunner, so we didn't have any open drive with this feature to test with. Then the sidewalk height is also not being generated, and since the sidewalks must be higher than the road level for collision to be detected, we added a constant height for the time being to guarantee these collisions. What I've showed you was the first iteration on this mode, and we have big plans for it. Starting with OpenStreetMaps file ingestion, so you could just download an OSM from the free OpenStreetMaps API and use it directly with Carla. So an open drive is generated, and following the same procedure, we could ingest these maps into Carla. Just think of automatically importing maps like this one within a few seconds. Then, why not importing bigger maps? Well, that's in our plans too. We are making some tests in that direction. Here you have a quick demonstration, a wall map of Barcelona loaded into Carla. We need to improve performance, to do so we must prepare Unreal to deal with these maps. A new version of OpenDrive has been recently released, and it comes with more details and some new features, such as tunnels. We've also planned to increase the number of things generated by this mode, like line markings or even buildings from OpenStreetMaps. So that's pretty much it regarding this new mode. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.